Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Socks and Stripes Forever. Uh, this is not a rerun. No. Nope. This is, uh, as you can tell by the, um, the facial hair, on me in particular, <laughs> um, things have changed a little bit. It's gotten a little colder out, although today it's very nice. It's beautiful. Today. It's like 70 degrees, isn't it? Very strange. There's oh. some people outside in shorts. Yeah, I actually almost put shorts on I was on surprised. Yeah, I thought I when you went home, you were going to put shorts on. I should have, and then, uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't. But anyways, uh, so we're back. Um, this is our, our kind of our season finale, mm -hmm. right? We're going to uh, wrap up the season. Um, the season was wrapped up for both of us. It's uh, a long time ago, you know, man. When we were still really in, in shorts and tank tops. <laughs> like and, August. Uh, yeah, we're in July for some for me. But uh, before we start, we have a couple uh, a couple of things we want to talk about. So as you saw before we got on the air, we're going to uh, we commemorate this show for uh, Mark Grabber, one of our fallen uh, comrades at, at work that we uh, we just lost last week, uh, succumbed to cancer, uh, just a terrible, terrible thing. And so um, our uh, thoughts and prayers go out for Mark and his family. Um, had a memorial service for him a couple of days ago. It was a real nice thing. And um, yeah, it's just a, a terrible thing. 49 years old, you know, and uh, you know as good as anybody that, you know, I mean, everybody has somebody affected by cancer and it's, um, it's just a terrible thing. And I also, on a side note, um, heard recently that Connecticut has the highest level of um, cancer patients in the country, and southeastern Connecticut has the hi highest concentration of cancer patients in the country. So Interesting. take that for what it's worth. Um, I, I don't. The source on that was a little a little iffy. It was uh, Doug told me because he he was in the um, the leadership program, and they went to the cancer center, the L and M Cancer Center, and they told him that. So I don't know why they would make that up. Uh, the only thing I can surmise is maybe the um, millstone, but it's not like we're the only people with a nuclear power plant close by, but we also have nuclear submarines. I don't know. Uh, so anyways, uh, I'm going off topic here a little bit. But also, yeah, I'm really uh, demoralized. also uh, for, for the older folks, uh, Larry Lynch also passed, and he was also a water treatment plant operator. So we're down a couple uh, water treatment plant operators. Um, it's um, Larry retired. He had 30 years. Larry was 69 years old. Interesting. Uh, he was 69 when he retired. So, so I started no, no, on. No, he, he just he was 69 when he. Passed. Oh, okay. So I started on um, in December of 2007. Larry uh, retired in April of 2008. So I only got to spend a, a few months with Larry, and at the time I felt blessed about it. <laughs> so you know, he was. Um, it he was, was smart. He was a smart guy. Yeah, he, he was. was smart. He he was. He he um, he he was at the at the end of his career and was starting to not care so much, I guess. So I, I was told earlier on in his career he was an excellent worker. So, um, you know, it was different times, different people and everything else. So, you know, it's an unfortunate way to, to start the show off, but I feel like we, we had to yep. uh, make that mention. And like I say, we commemorate or, uh, you know, this show is uh, in memory of, of Mark. So, um, and after that, a couple other things. The uh, Mrs. Professor, uh, before we went on the show here today, you said uh, Miss, Mrs. Professor was given uh, the professor so, some, um, some, some, some guff. Okay. You want to know, like, okay, when is <laughs> the next? The, the when is the next said? show? <laughs> so, so you got. We, we have to ask ourselves this question. Okay. <laughs> we look up to the professor. Yeah. Think like only because he, he's taller than both of us. <laughs> they, and, and that he's he's the he's the man. <laughs> but when the professor, the, but who did the professor answers to? Oh well, you know. So that means we we all are answering. Okay. To Mrs. Professor. Understood. <laughs> understood. It's like uh, you know. The, the uh, behind every good man. That's it. A good yeah. woman. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Martha Washington was really the one running the country back in the day. Whatever. Nancy Reagan. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Michelle Obama. Oh, boy. Not so much. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Who knows? Um, so uh, so yeah, we're back. So I'm, I hope she's happy now, <laughs> right? And I'm sure the professor hope hopes so. she's happy too. So um, let's let's get into what we're here for. I mean, we got any other uh, any stuff? How how has your last uh, month and a half month been? Anything of any significance besides we changed the clocks back so it would be dark by the time we walk out of the studio. Well, at really least sucks. when we're going to work, it's not That's dark. Good point. You know, I mean, that was, that was depressing. Very, yep. Um, so right now, but I think it's going to slide backwards still until December 21st, I think. Exactly. So I think the, we're going to we're, we're hit some dark times again in the morning, but it won't be too bad. <laughs> dark times are right in more ways than one. But, uh, yeah, it's, and it's, you know, 4.30 now. You know, around then, around the middle of, of December, it would be about 4.30, you know, start getting dark and... Then you got to deal with all the Christmas shopping. But and we're stuff. getting so up at three o'clock. As I can, instead of four yeah, o'clock. As you can tell, I'm, I'm really thrilled about this time yeah. of year, right? Um, I got, Are, aren't you excited at all no. now? You, really? So, so baseball hasn't started to sink in that you've got the possibility of, you know, riding the ship a little bit. 
Oh, when we can talk about baseball, yeah, yeah, that's a different story. I mean, I saw uh, on Twitter the other day, um, oh God, I can't, maybe 160 days till pitchers and catchers report. Does that sound right? I don't know. Whatever it was, it, it was like. It doesn't that many. No, okay. So whatever it was, it was like, all right, so there, you know, there's a number. We got a number here. You know, it's, and then you're thinking about it. Okay, it's November. For three months. It's, it's, Exactly. So I mean, it's not it's not all doom and gloom, no. right? We just gotta. We're gonna be there before you know it. Yeah, I know, and we say that every year. And the next thing you know, we're doing our next show again, which we did. Which we decide. didn't pick. See that? See, I, that's why I always say that. And you tell me to relax and don't worry about it. I know. And and then you know. It, well, I have, I have evidence in my phone that you texted me about 20 minutes ago saying, "Let's make sure that we have a date for the next show so we can put it out in the air." So we're just gonna say mid March. How about that? Uh, probably. Yeah. Wait. Well, I think the 19th was like the right. next to last. There's somewhere around there the 12th the 19th let's let's because, say because would we like to start a week before i was just gonna say let's start the week before baseball starts so the, the last week of march how's that that sounds because good so, the, so let's tell the people the last thursday of march i think go. it's the 26th but i'm get, not sure get your calendars out and because baseball opening day is usually april 1st or thereabouts april 5th or whatever and now, so, well now it's early mar late march that's true uh, and uh this is not a wbc year is it uh ooh, i don't know might be. That'd and be my, I think you might be right. That'd be interesting. Uh, yeah, that's something we need to. Wouldn't we? Should, we, wouldn't, we, we wouldn't, wouldn't we have read more about that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's it, next year. It might year. be next year. Yeah. So, well, a couple of experts we are don't yeah. even know that one. All right. So let's uh, first things first before we get into uh, Sox and Yanks, we'll talk about the playoffs a little bit, right? Okay. Because um, that's that's really what we've what we've missed while we were gone, because uh, our last show was at the end of the season and the playoffs went through. And for me, uh, I'll give you my synopsis in, in, real quick. I thought that the the Division Series and the Championship Series were some of the most exciting baseball where my team or the, the Red Sox and the Yankees weren't involved in some of the most exciting baseball I've seen maybe ever, um, especially the, the Royals and the, the Orioles and, uh, I mean, knocking off Detroit and, and the Angels. I, I thought that was awesome. I mean, real awesome. And, and you see the, what the Royals did, I really thought they were a team of destiny, right? And they had a guy 90 feet away from, from tying the World Series in the last game. But um, it was... It, it was the World Series itself, for me, was, you know, kind of anticlimactic. Yeah, good, good. That's a good, uh, an, a good word for it because it was just kind of like, ah, all right, you know, it's now it's over. It was open for the Royals to win. I think you were too. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, the Giants, you know, they just find a way. They're they're like they're almost they remind me a lot of the um, the San Antonio Spurs, right? They just kind of have those professional players and they. Get, I have a theory. Yeah. Okay, you want to hear it? Were, you, were you done? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I was, I, my point was really that it was exciting up until the World Series was like you said it was anticlimactic. But the the, cha the the division and the championship series, I mean, you saw a couple of weird things like in um, Washington where Jordan Zimmerman got taken out in the ninth inning and they lost in what 19 innings or something. I mean, there was some really really cool stuff that happened and it was exciting. It held my interest. Um, so that's all. My theory is, um, or I'm going to throw this out there and you tell me what you think. Is that I'm done. I'm done thinking to myself, why is it St. Louis, San Francisco, those teams that, are, that aren't loaded, but they are deep, mm -hmm. let's put it that way, mm -hmm. and they can go win 88 games and win the World Series? Well, you know, I go back to a theory that you had a while back, and you called the, Na do you remember what you called the National League? Oh, I called it JV League. The JV League, okay. Yeah. Here's what I'm starting to wonder, and I shared this with the professor. What I'm starting to wonder is, does it really, that, that, that the American League has more powerful teams? I just think they do. I think they have more powerful teams, but what they do is beat on each other all year long. Yeah. And then in the National League, in the JV League, we have those teams, Milwaukee, uh, i.e. Washington, Atlanta, that your teams that, you know, that ilk. Mm -hmm. and and. They only have to play well in September. Well, because they're, because that, because they're almost all the same. Yeah. They don't, they, you know, the top six, seven, eight teams are all the same. The Dodgers, the Giants, all those teams. And so then it gets to September, and whoever starts to play well and whoever is healthy, then all of a sudden gets on a run. And then all you're talking about is when you get to the World Series, is to be able to be playing a special brand of baseball. Instead of surviving the American League. Yep. Yeah. So you might be on the You know, I'm here. thinking. I'm thinking Detroit. I'm thinking L.A. I'm thinking Baltimore. Yeah. You know, well, they run up against quasi National League teams, Royals, and teams like that, 
And you know, that time of year, you know, there's something in there that makes me feel like you shouldn't be worried about building powerhouses. Again, i.e. Yankees, Red Sox, um, the last 15 years, their yeah. attempt. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what's the world's payroll? 85 million, if 90? That, probably, if that. I, I, you're making good points here. You might be onto something. It's something I didn't think about is that you, um, you know, we talk about the, the National League as the JV League mainly for the reason that the pitcher bats, right? So the, so the, the ERAs are lower because the pitcher and the eight and nine batters are usually almost guaranteed They're outs. They're automatic outs. Right. So, but the, but the good National League teams like the, the, Roy, uh, the Cardinals and the, the, the Giants and the Dodgers, they have deep enough rosters where when they go and play a, an American League team, they can come with a, with a DH. That's adequate. But when the when the na the American League team has to go play in the National League, they're they're not they're that's losing a one of that's they're a losing distinct one of their, advantage. They're losing their, their one of their best hitters in the team, Dave and then Ortiz. they have to change they have to change the entire way they play. And the National League is suited for that. It makes no sense. Right. It makes no sense. That, that's a separate argument, but that's part of my argument. Well, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's really a good at, point. At the crux of it. And you think about the San Francisco Giants. Is it Baumgarten? Is that how you say it? Baumgartner. Baumgartner. You, you, you think of him. He, do you know, I read, an, I read this morning. Do you know how many percentage of innings he pitched for his team in the playoffs? Uh, probably a high amount. Thirty-two percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because and that's what happens when you have these sh series with with days off traveling and then days off between se um, series. Yep. And so the, I mean I mean the rest of the team ERA was like four and a half. Yeah. Well, he, I mean yeah, that guy carried you, the team. You couldn't survive in the American League playoffs like that. Right. You can't. Yeah. No, it's it, you're a hundred percent right, and, and you. As far as the teams beating up on each other, you you got you hit the nail on the head there, I think, because there, there is absolutely no reason that Detroit. So let's just take Detroit, for instance, right? Because the LA was good. LA was real good. The Angels this year. That this I thought maybe this was their year too, but let's just take Detroit as as a for instance. Look at that roster. I mean, that is a. It's almost like an all-star team. You know, they have a couple of holes here and there, as, especially in the bullpen. You know, they had big holes in the bullpen, and that's what got them. That's what got that's them right. bounced. But you know, they come out with Scherzer, they come out with Verlander, they come out with Price. They got <laughs> you know Victor uh, Victor Martinez. They got uh, Miguel Cabrera, and they got Kinsler. Got, they got all stars all over Tory the field. Tori Hunter. Yeah, and and they got swept. So I, I mean, um, you're, you're right. Maybe there's just. Uh, beating up on each other. And maybe this is something that the GMs now, who, by the way, are have GMs meetings right now as we speak. Um, but maybe this is, um, as far as roster construction, is something they need to start thinking about. You know, stop going after uh, Scherzer in the offseason and, and spending $200 million. Or stop going after uh, Pablo Sandoval because it's a flashy signing. You know, maybe you need to sign guys that are um, more adequate to – the, the, the guys that are just the, the performers, you know what I mean? You don't need superstars everywhere in your roster. I, I, I mean, like you said before, St. Louis is a perfect example. It, it, we can use them as an example every single year almost because they have guys that are just maybe average to a little bit below, b above average. Can you name one superstar on St. Louis's team besides... Um, Molina. Yeah, okay, well, not really. Yeah, he yeah. is a superstar. Yeah, he but, is. All right. But, but saw, and, um, the, the next is like a B-plus player in um, Holiday. Yeah. Holiday. Yeah, you know, and not... B-plus guy. Yeah, I mean, so... But... But they get it done every But year. your argument is a bunch of C-plus, B-minus guys, right? And, and I think that's what these guys do. Same and, thing. And it's about pitching, and it's about defense, and, and, and it's about setting up for a run because the eighth and ninth guys are outs in the lineup, so you, you're always setting up for a run. Right, which is exactly why uh, Kansas City was was really suited to, to go to the World Series this year because yeah. that's exactly how they played. Like, we talked about Kansas City earlier in the season when they started playing well, and we said – these guys are, are a bunch of the kind of nobodies. You know, you heard of a couple of guys, Billy Butler and, you know, not really. Alex though. Gordon. Yeah, just kind of kind of guys. Just They call them Jags, right? Just mm -hmm. average guys. But um, they they all played exceptional defense, especially that yeah. Kane. Well, you, you, made a, Kane. you made a big deal about that. I remember, like, 
in August, you're like, you know, this team, they play really good defense. Exactly. And that and run, keeps them in the games. Yep, and they run the bases, and their bullpen Their bullpen, yep. Lights out. See, I, I, think, I think that's one thing you're going to start to see. And, and baseball is kind of going towards the bullpen. I think you're going to see it go full throttle that way now. That's why I think you see Andrew Miller get a bunch of money. Yeah, he's going to get three years. And, and I bet you gets more. Once we start digging into our teams here, you know, I think that's going to be a, um, a pressing issue on both sides. I mean, it's, Okay, well, you know what? We're, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Go All ahead. Right. Why don't you start? All right, we'll start with the Red Sox. Well, because the Red Sox are, uh, we're, we're going to do the um, the worst to first to worst to first. I think yeah. you know, and if the Red Sox, you know, come somehow pull the this division's thing around, there to take. And I, I, here's here's my philosophy on the Red Sox next year. I, I don't think the Red Sox are going to turn it right around like they did last time. It, that was a fluke, right? I mean, well, what do you call turning it around? Well, going back to the series, oh, okay. or even first well, place. I, yeah, well, if, you, if your team plays well and wins 90-something games last year, that's turning next around. year, and then whatever happens you're okay with, is that turning it around? Yeah, is it I back in contention. I don't see, you don't think the Red Sox can be in contention? Well, okay, yeah, they, they can't be any worse they've got, than they Well, they've got year. moves to make to get back in contention. That's the point. So they have, they have big moves <coughs> to make. Yes, um, they do. Number one, I think the, the most pressing issue on the Red Sox next year, obviously, is starting pitching. Um, I'm really worried about... <laughs> Clay Buckholtz start in opening day. And if they don't do something, that's what's going to happen. And the problem is, and it's a problem with all teams, is what's out there. They have two superstar free agents, right? You got Scherzer and you got Lester, and they're both going to make a boatload of money. So the Red Sox, I think, are going to be real leery of that. I'm still, you know, holding out maybe they'll somehow figure out how to bring Lester back. Okay, well, the, I, I don't I – don't. I don't think there's going to be a problem trying to bring Lester back. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But unlike you, this, you and I had this argument all year long, and I think you have no choice but to acquiesce to me now, okay? Because, you know, do you, how many years do you think Scherzer is going to get? He's going to get at least eight, right? Oh, I, I, gee, they see that he, that's even being more aggressive than me. I'm thinking he gets six big, big money okay. or seven. And if he knows he can get that, and, and Lester is, let's just call him 1A to Scherzer. Okay. Okay? You, you, you can make the argument he's 1 and Scherzer's 1A, and I won't argue with you. Yeah, one's a lefty, so, so if he knows, yeah, the, the difference between Lester and Scherzer is very simple. Lester's proven he can win in the playoffs. To me, that's a big deal. All right? Scherzer's pitched well in the playoffs, too, though. Yeah, but Lester's won a World Series. He has. Okay? Yep. Here's the thing. Why would Lester take less? There's no reason. If, yeah. if somebody gives him seven, the Red Sox are going to have to give him six and 26. Yeah. It, I think the Red Sox might be willing to do that. I think their their philosophy is uh, they. It, well, av, that would be going old, against their philosophy. AAV. You, yeah. You know that, yeah. So yeah. I think the Red Sox are, and, and I'm all for that because. Average annual value. For, 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 for people watching. Yeah. You give them more per year with less years. And right. I think that's the direction that. The team, all teams should be going in because you lock these guys up into long contracts, and we've 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 gone over this so, Sabathia, many, yeah, so many times. We've gone over this. Yeah, and there's just there's, there's no payoff. There's too many examples of where it doesn't work, and there's I don't know how many examples of where it does. And we, I don't, we talked about this before. Miguel Cabrera is a, an example of it working out. Okay, so he's playing so well. far. Yeah, and he's starting to break down a little bit, yeah. right? You know, but, thirty-one. Yeah, and like I said, Manny Ramirez was like the only player I've ever seen where it worked out for ten years. He gave him ten years, and it worked out for ten but, years. But what was my what, what, what was my point when I brought that up last year? He did steroids. No, oh. he was twenty-five when they signed. Exactly. That's, I mean, or, that's or kind, twenty-seven. Kind of contract, you know? Not even. Yeah, it's the yeah. kind of contract you'd give to Stanton, maybe. You or know? Trout. Right. You know, exactly. I'd give ten years to those guys if I could get them to sign it. And, and even still, that's a little a little precarious because say they say they blow out their knee or something, and you know you never know. Okay. Right? Well, and, and, but my point my point being is that if if you get these guys and you and you get them in more of their prime now, that as opposed to like. You know, we're going to see what's going to happen in Seattle with Cano. You know what's going to happen. They're yeah. going to get they're going to get prime years out of Cano. Cano had a good year this year. Yep. Right? Excellent year, actually. Yeah, an excellent year. He, he might be – he's in contention for the MVP. But um, you know that ev as every year goes on, it's going to start tailing off to the point where it's going to be your, – your return on your value of your investment is going to be negligible, if anything. So that's, that's where the Red Sox need to – and that's where I think Ben Sherrington is really trying to push. But also I think he's – there might be this, this – struggle with man with ownership where now ownership is saying we want to spend right right i agree and we have money we lost a lot of money last year off the books <coughs> but everybody else has money now i know that's, that's the problem. that see the yankees and red sox can't succeed this way anymore because you know because 
because you be these kid everybody's got money like well, Texas well, has more, yeah, more well, money than yeah the Dodgers um, um, the Nationals everybody's got money the Mets I mean the, and they're these teams like not don't don't just have it but are willing to spend it I right. didn't think Seattle's gonna spend more money this year you know they have that yeah supposedly they're going to tons of money yeah so 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 why would I mean what Lester would want it would have to be true hometown discount in the number of years right number and, of years he, so, came, he, he came out and said before, if they gave him something comparable to a market value. Yeah, but, yeah, but dude. So I know, I know. Dude, I, what are the, the Cubs want him bad. Oh, I think the Cubs, Cubs him. want him bad. I really think he's going to be a Cubby unless the draw to the Red Sox is that great. And you know what? We won't know that until he signs somewhere. That's right. Yeah, and, and I would, would watch out for the Braves, too. I don't know what tells uh, me. He bought a house in Georgia. I don't know if that I, means I, anything. Well, you he know, sold his house in Boston and bought a house in Georgia. I don't know. All you I, take whatever you can. Yeah, out of that, right? it's, you it's so know, dude, he could walk out with a. You take the money out of his pocket and buy a house in Boston tomorrow. <laughs> sure, sure. So, <laughs> speaking of houses, the the I, I find an analogy of what the situation we're in right now, where you know the economy's great and everybody wants to buy a house, but there's not enough houses that's to right. buy. Right? So the there's, prices in houses are going to go up. Exactly. There's Just, no inventory. And, and that's what's going to happen in in this. So now. Now Scherzer's gonna Scherzer rolled the dice oh. and he's gonna win big time. <laughs> Lester's gonna get the payoff for having to play with the A's for two months. True. There's gonna be a payoff now for him. He's gonna go wherever he wants in relation to who's gonna bid on him. Right. The question is, so let's ask this question. What if the Red Sox don't get Lester? Uh, well, okay, and then that brings me to the next point. So they have free agency op options. There's a couple other guys. I mean, James Shields, Shields. is a guy that's that's been thrown around, and I I have a feeling James Shields isn't going to end up on the Red Sox. I don't know why. Um, there's a couple other uh, ancillary, you know, um, starters out there that the, are, are on free agency. You know, guys that are like three or fours, and the or the Red Sox can go after a trade, right? So a couple of guys, I've, names I've seen thrown away. Cole Hamill's name has been thrown around forever here, so I, I'm still. I'm not a huge Cole Hamels fan, you know that. In in coming over from the National League, I don't know. It depends on what they'd have to give up for him. Or the boatload. I think so. Yeah, and the Red Sox love his contract. You know, it's a that's the kind of contract they want. I think he's owed like 90 year, 90 million for four years right. or something like that. Yep. Um, I've also seen Johnny Cueto's name thrown around. Yep. Also have to give up a boatload. That guy is a that's a guy you might oh, want to get your hands him. on. Yeah. And I don't know his age, but I don't think he's that old. He's not that old. Um, I've also seen a couple of guys from the Mets names thrown around. Zach Wheeler would be nice, real nice. Oh, you're not, yeah. forget it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, what been, mine it's been thrown is like Nice. John Nice and Zach Wheeler. I got both their names written down. Zach Wheeler. I know. Man, what did that cost you? Holy I, cow. I know. Because, because, well, here's the thing. <coughs> you, know why the Mets, you know why the Mets would get even more for him? He's still got, well, he's not even at arbitration I yet. I know, I know. And, and, but the Mets are, the Mets are, are loaded in arms, right? And they, they have no offense at all. And the Red Sox are kind of, the opposite. They have a, they have a plethora of outfielders that they don't know what to do with. Well, the Mets need one outfielder, and I'll tell you what the Mets would bite on is um, Bogarts. Cespedes. Oh, so I, I, I don't I, I don't think. Well, I got to tell you what. There's a kid I've been reading about. Have you know this kid, um, Marrero? Uh, Shortstop for the Red Sox. Yeah. They say he's a better player already. Do they say right now that he's the best defensive player in baseball? At the level he's at, and that he projects more power than Bogarts. I, I read a little bit about Marrero. I didn't read that much. Uh, I didn't. I, it made me sick to my stomach, but I got to pass. <laughs> you know, facts a fact. You well, know, well a, those are probably just trade him for you know a player to be named later. <laughs> well, no, no, no. That's the you know. But see, the, would, would, would the Mets want him? Would the Mets want Bogarts? Because they feel like Bogarts can hold shortstop for a couple years until this kid comes. When a couple yeah. years ago, shortstop was being held for Bogarts. Right. Yeah. So I'm starting to come along to this theory of, um, you know what, um, talent's like a belly button. Everybody's got talent type thing. Dude, I don't have a belly button. You know that. Yeah, no, why I, you got to say that? You know why. And I don't have talent either. Is that what you're, you're getting yeah, at? I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, we might just have to end the show now. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Bogarts thing is is interesting because I read that the the Red Sox are uh, actually very pleased with Bogarts. And yeah, his he progress. had a nice he had a nice September. Yes, he did, and it was after the whole getting shuffled back and forth to third. So um, they they locked him up at short. I think um, he's fine there. I think th the pitching is going to be the biggest thing. Th this is their this is their Ross their rotation going into next year if it stands as it is. Buckholtz, like I said, Joe Kelly, Alan Webster, Ruby Delarosa, and Anthony Renato. 
And you, you're not getting out of the they, basement with they, that. They, yeah, they're, they're, they're not an 81 team with that. And, and the problem with these guys, and I like these young guys, and you like what you see out of them, and you know, like Brandon Workman, a lot of these guys, they just they didn't really excite you last year. You know what I mean? A couple of them showed some glimpses. But and they still might mature, keep maturing. Absolutely. I mean, Clayton Kershaw had bad, bad years do when you, he was coming up. Do you know where you are? Where you are is, and there's still talent coming behind him, but where you are is, is you've got this glut. You don't have you don't have this experience, so you can just because the secret is is to sprinkle them, right? Yes. Maybe one or two guys a year, sprinkle them. Exactly. But you can't count on three or four guys to carry your rotation, because the law of averages is only one of them probably works out. A couple will end up in a bullpen. One maybe is a fourth starter for somebody mm -hmm. in ten years. Mm -hmm. So so with that, there's the Red Sox problem. Right. It's almost like the Red Sox got to go out. And, don't you think they have to find two starters? Absolutely. So two starters. Almost a almost a one and a two uh, or a one and a three. Yeah, because I mean I mean I don't even know if I'm confident having Buckholtz throwing out of the three slot. <laughs> if Buckholtz was throwing out of the four or five spot, I'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. But now you're asking a couple of these kids to do that. So what if you bring in Wester, um, Shields? Yeah, Lester Shields is the two names. Buckholtz and then now two younger kids. Then are you okay? Now you're talking. Okay, well, then, then you're talking about if Buckholtz craps the bed. You're okay. Really? You think you're okay? Yeah, because okay. You, you can, because you have, if, if Buckholtz craps the bed now, you're screwed. But, right. But if he craps the bed, okay, you have so, Lester so, Shields, you have. Well, so you have, we're, we're going to get start getting short on time, so let's stick to this. Let's stick to this for the Red Sox. What, it's too much to talk about. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Maybe we should be having two shows here. Well, what, what, so what if you don't get two guys? Then Are you going to sign Shields as your number one guy, and then, as you said, an ancillary person? Uh, Who's a good ancillary person? I was just thinking when you said that. There Irvin was, Santana's name, I heard. Yeah, you know, but you, you know, innings eaters kind of guys. You, 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 there was a guy I keep thinking of. I can't remember who it is. Uh, Guthrie, maybe. No, no, but guys like that. Yeah, yeah. But my point isn't, don't you think because of all the money that those guys are going to strike it rich like Nick Swisher did. Yeah. Because there are, there's not a plethora, to use your word, okay? Mm. So now let's, when Lester signs here and um, wherever, wherever um, Scherzer goes, oh, Scherzer, yeah. okay, what do you think Shields is going to ask for? Yeah, uh, probably, you know, four uh, or five years. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know what it is, I'm, but, I mean, you get my drift, and yeah. he's 34. He is? Yes, he's 34. Has pitched in the AL East and pitched well. And a that, lot of innings. So now, so now, is somebody going to give him five years? What's my theory, dude? What's my theory There's always? Like stupid owner. There's after. always one dumb owner. Right, yeah. All right? There's yeah. always one dumb owner who's going to give him four years at 20. Do you want to give him at four years at 20 a year? He, you know, he might get that contract. Well, I think he's going to. My point's be. My, my, Do you want it to be your, your my, team? My whole <laughs> argument is this. This one's only happening because there's so much money in baseball. Yes, because of so, us. Huh? Because of us. Oh no, because of TV contracts well, and fans. stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Well, not yeah, you and I. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. We, don't make we wouldn't be sitting here if it was you and I. Um, <laughs> did you see my point? Yes. So these guys that are third, fourth, fifth in line are going to hit, are going to do better than we thought they could have done five years ago. Oh yeah. Before all this money came out. Oh yeah. It, it, it's you know it's a it's almost a um, so it brings me back to the Red Sox. It's almost like so you know guys like McCarthy. The Yankees are hard hot, hot after him right now, but he's not stupid. Uh, he knows he's he's not you know he pitched well at the end. And he's not. I mean he's a he's not that special. He's a three or a four. He's a three on really good days. He's, okay? a, ground, he's a ground ball pitcher that yeah. throws strikes. He's a, yeah. He's, he's so, adequate. But, but the thing is, is that he knows his agents telling him, no, we're gonna hold on. Oh, why we're gonna you? we're gonna wait for Scher Scherzer to sign. And Scherzer's a, a Boris guy, right? Yeah. So you know what that means? He's set the bar. He's not. Yeah, but he's not. Gonna sign till January. Yeah. So there's gonna be some kind of log jam. Nothing's gonna happen for a while. It's not. No, you're not. So you're not gonna see anything. unless, unless Lester says, likes the Red Sox offer, or Theo blows him out of the water. Yeah. And then maybe there'll be a minor breakage in the log jam. Yeah. But if it's not Lester for you, and it's not gonna be Scherzer because he's gonna get seven or eight years. And the Red, what's the Red Sox mantra right now? They won't do it. Not gonna do it. No. So now those two guys are off, and that leaves James Shields, but James Shields now will be controlling he's everything. He's got all the leverage. He's got all, he's all got the bargaining yeah, power. Yeah, he's got everything. Whatever yeah. phrase you wanna use, he's yeah. got it all. Yep, and so. So I, now I wanna ask you this. You don't get any of those three guys, what do you do? <laughs> 
Then you, gotta, you know you what? Trade. Then you have to Philadelphia's going to gonna know you want my guy. Yeah. They're really going to hold you up. Yeah, they are. But you have something other teams don't have. You have a plethora, I'll keep going back to your word, okay? Abundance. Abundance of young of players yeah. that, you know, you might say, but it might be bets. It might be, uh, help me with a kid at third base again. Middlebrooks? No. Chinini? Oh, Chikini. Chikini. I almost said it right. Chikini, <laughs> Bogarts, or... Oh, they got tons of guys. Or Yeah, but my point is... Pitching. Maybe this kid... And maybe three Morale. other players, yep. or maybe Vasquez, even though now they're saying he's not really the guy they want to trade his two kid deep in the system they like better. No, they said the, the Swihart kid yeah. is untouchable. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Were, okay, if you I, if I thought you, they if really like um, If you can't get any pitching and you, and you need Hamels, is, is he going to be untouchable then? Then maybe oh. you tra trade Vasquez then. Vasquez, Vasquez is a really good catcher. Yeah, but Philadelphia is going to do it smarter. I think Philadelphia is going to want kids that are young, even if they have to be in the in the minors. And they know. I, I mean, it's like you're not you're not hiding anything from anybody, right? Everybody knows what you have, and and because this is another problem that the Red Sox have had is that they've showcased a lot of their talent, and some of it hasn't been all it's been hyped up to be. No, whose is? Well, some of them it is. I mean, no, no, no. My my point is, doesn't every team do that? Every yeah, team does. No, that. but the Red Sox did it more. Maybe you know, well, some, maybe some teams do it in September because you know they're. They, they were in contention for most of the year, but the Red Sox had these guys all season long. And like Jackie Bradley Jr., he's not going to fetch any price this next year. None. N none. Even though he could go to a team like um, any team, say Milwaukee, for, for, for instance. He could go to Milwaukee and maybe change his swing up and, you know, Look get, at Gomez, get with a better. Look at Gomez, that Gomez kid. Yeah. He's with the Mets and he bit. St. Louis couldn't hit. Same thing. Goes to Milwaukee now. You know, I don't know. Is that a Roy guy? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just threw if Jackie, Roy, if Jackie Bradley went on Roy's, he'd be an all-star. Well, he is an all-star because of his defense. But if he starts hitting... Uh, what? Socks and sweat? No, no. You know, what do you think of, um, you know, I mean, we could talk 30 more minutes. Nah, let's just get into the Yankees. We got no, it. No, 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 there's no. not enough because, I mean, I, we're, we're here. We have a show to talk about what we think tr dip, uh, moves to make and where it should go and stuff like that. Well, I mean. The, okay, let's talk a little bit longer about the Red Sox. There's though. not really much more. I'm, the I mean, third I mean, base is one thing that, I, that there's, a, there's a major hole. Uh, there, I mean, the, the, the outfield yeah, is. Yeah, but what about the Chikini kid? He, they're they're going to put him in the Myers. He, babe, he played Triple A this year. Did you just call me Babe? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, he play, they're going to put him in the, They're going to start him in Myers. The question is whether they're going to start, they're going to hang with Middlebrooks for another season or not. Or they're going to go out, there's all this they talk about, about the Panda. They can't, they, you know what? I think they're a player for him. Yeah. And I'll tell you. And you know what? He that, wants 100 mil. You know, for, for how many years? Five. You, yeah, but he's only 28. Yeah, but he's fat. He's a big fat so. Okay, so you're going to play Middlebrook? If you could have him or Middlebrooks at third, well, here's, here's a couple other guys I, I names I heard. Uh, Hanley Ramirez has been thrown out, but he's going to want big money. Pedro Alvarez from the um, Pirates. Uh, Lonnie Chisenhall from the Indians. Uh, Pablo Sandoval. Chase Headley. I don't know. Maybe like I wouldn't a, do that. A bargain pa thing. Pablo, you know what we always say? Pablo only costs you money. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with the, with the, um, the pitching. You know what I mean? If Lester or, or Scherzer or Shields, if you're just going to throw money out there, then, you know, might as well just... Just do it because you have plenty of it. It's not like they're they're strapped for so, cash. So okay, so you figure Victorino's back. Yep. You figure Betts is in center field. Um, no, Castillo. Yeah. And then you got and then Betts you got. Betts left. I don't know. I don't know about Betts. Betts might be your utility infielder because you got um, Cespedes. I, I think it's going to be Victorino. Although uh, Victorino had back surgery, you know, who knows what he's going to be. So you got Victorino. So you're saying you feel like the Red Sox are set in the outfield? I do. I think okay. they have too many outfielders and you, right and, now. and you feel like Bogarts is going to be the shortstop. Yep. So you're basically talking to me. The only thing you're going to do is pitching, bullpen, and third base. I believe so. And I think that I think that we talked about the bullpen before. I think the Red Sox are going to probably try to bolster that bullpen like crazy. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You have like, to. Like just uh, you have to. get as many You have as to if you don't know what you're going to be starting pitching. I know, because the guys might be pitching set six, seven <laughs> innings. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean. Um, okay, so tell me what you think. Okay, so so we know. I'm serious. I mean, I, I think. So now, what, now, what do you I think has to happen? I could be 100% wrong, and I probably am. But I think that the, the priorities are going to be pitching. Right. Pitching, pitching, pitching. Right? Okay. You've got to do something about your pitching. Um, Number two is going to be third base. They're going to have to do something about third base. I think first base is fine with Napoli. Napoli should have a bounce back here. Second base, obviously. I think they love Bogarts at short. Catching is fine. Maybe go go get a um, a veteran catcher or something like that, or just bring back. They're Ross, easy to find, right? Yeah, you know. 
Um, Ortiz is going to be fine, I think. And I think center field, left field, and right field is going to be fine because you also have bets out there. You also have the possibility of like Daniel Nava or Jackie Bradley. Um, Jackie Bradley if you have to use them. And if not, you just start these guys in the minors and you see if, what kind of progression they make. You can start Mookie Betts in the minors. There's no, no problem with that. You know I've got to tell but you what. I think now might be the best time to trade him, though. Probably. I mean, his value is not going to yeah. get any higher. You know, or it now, could, but I mean, Now might be the time to trade him. But they might really like him, too. Okay, well, I just asked you that question. You said he's going to be on the bench. We got Brock Holt, too. You got to figure out what you're going to do with him. Um, That's a professor's boy. I know. So, I, I, listen. Uh, yeah, we didn't even mention his name. But you know what? Well, Brock Holt no, 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 is a... No disrespect to the professor. Yeah. Okay, but I think... He's a Daniel Nava. I, I think he's Daniel Nava. Yeah, Mava. he had a flash in the pan year. And... and I, they'll, they'll probably give but, him. But a, yeah, yeah. But the difference between him and Nava, though, is this kid can play the in, is kid an infielder. Yes. Too. He can play every. He so, can play so I, I think I think you think you see this kid play. He's your. He's he plays your super, a lot. He's your super utility a, infielder. He plays as like a tenth guy. Yeah, he's your super utility player. You know, because he can play all the positions. Okay, so you're saying okay, so, who, um, gut instinct. What happens at third base starting starting day, opening day? Mookie Betts. That's my call. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. I don't. I don't have any more faith in in Will Meadowbrooks. You know that. I, I was hoping last year was going to be the year he was going to turn around. I just the Jenny Dell thing. You know, I kind of don't like him because of that too. He's, but yeah, but he's the man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what? If he's not starting at third base, that's the. That's he, not, he yeah, if he, if he goes back to Pawtucket, you know she drops him. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> She's hanging around all these football players now, so yeah. you know, he, he, he might be. Uh, he better be bulking up a little bit. All right, so that's. I mean, that's what I think about the okay. about the, the Red okay. Sox. I mean, that's fair. We'll, we'll when we do our next show. We don't have to do another show because we might just water it down, you know, because we're just. I just really think I covered everything we need okay. to cover. But when we do our our preseason show, everything I just said could be totally right. You could throw it all up in the air and see what see what shakes out. I think we'll know a lot more next month as soon as the winter meetings conclude, if anything happens but I think you're right I don't I think until it's going to be later in the winter that that we're going to hear things last remember last year didn't last year a lot of things happened early yeah you know Ellsbury got signed right. and, and um other you know a bunch of other guys got signed I, you know McCann got signed and stuff like that. obviously the Yankees just went out and made moves but I think that the, this year they're going to wait for the chips to start falling like you just you just you just said and we could even you know, equate that to the Yankees because the Yankees are, are the Yankees going to be players for these guys? They say they're not going to be, but who? who okay, can well, let's believe, talk about who the can Yankees. believe that. And, and one other thing for the Red Sox, I think, is a, is kind of a big thing, is that they hired Chili Davis as their hitting coach. Okay. And I don't, I don't know how much stock you can put into that, but it can't hurt, right? No, it can't because hurt because everybody wanted him. And Chili Davis. When is, the Yankees had him at the end of his career. He was like the perfect clubhouse guy, you know. Yeah. And you know he'd been trouble his whole career. Oh yeah. He was trouble his whole career, but he got older, he matured, came to the Yankees, and Don't we all? and 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 became this. And he was part of this Wade Box thing, where he saw more pitches than anybody, had great at bats. And you know when you have a guy that's like 36 and he's like your part-time guy, but but late in the game when he comes to the plate, you feel good that he's at the plate. Yeah. So that's you know is that you know that doesn't hurt having that guy as your uh, batting coach. He. Uh, in in the, the epic historic game of um, the, the Pedro versus uh, Roger Clemens, he hit a home run off Pedro for the only run, only hit, right? Do you remember that? Yep. And I Pedro did. struck out what nine, 17 batters that game, and then Chot Nixon hit one off of uh, Clemens. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, uh, all right, let's talk about the Yankees a little bit. I mean, the Yankees are, um, are in a similar boat. I mean, they, the Yankees have a lot of. Uh, we talked about this before. The the contracts. Right. The contracts going to kill them. And the A Rod thing is like, what a disaster. This is turning out to be already. Oh my God. It's like. All over the place with the PD. The difference and between the Yankees and the Red Sox <laughs> is that the that the, the Red Sox have the ability to move north, whether it's players or money or whatever, because they're not beholden right. financially. Right. All right. The Yankees have Teixeira, they're beholden to. <sighs> the Yankees have A Rod for three more years, they're beholden to. The Yankees have Sabathia for three more years, they're beholden to. Upside is money doesn't mean anything to the Yankees, so so maybe you shouldn't even be thinking about this, okay? But at some point it does have to start meaning but, something. But but I'll tell you where it's. You know what? I don't think it is. But you know where it is a problem, is that if you have big contracts, but they kind of like go away, like two years one goes away, the next year one goes away, the next year another one goes away. The Yankees have all these contracts, and you can't. They can't make a move because they're strangled by the years, right? Not the money. Exactly. They're strangled by the years. Wouldn't the Yankees love to move away from Sabathia? Yes. Of course they would. Wouldn't the Yankees love to move away from Teixeira? Huh. Yes. And a Wouldn't the Yankees just release a Rod? Yes. Those three people are going to be playing for the Yankees mm -hmm. this year. Okay. 
The bigger problem is we're talking about a circus with A-Rod. A-Rod cannot play third base. There's just no way physically after those two hip operations he can play at 40 and play third base, okay? A-Rod at the best is a DH that gives him, I have no idea what, and maybe a backup to Teixeira to some extent, okay? That's yep. what they're talking about. Yep. So that leaves third base open for the Yankees. Yep. The Yankees would like to bring Headley back, but being in New York brought him a lot of press, and he played decently. He didn't tear the cover off the ball, no. but he was awesome defensive third baseman. Yep. So now at the age of 31, there are teams, there, now he's making noise about he wants four years when the Yankees are open two years, maybe three years, he's or only, even a, one year. He's only 31. He's only 31, okay? But he's also coming off a couple of issues. Yeah. But in relation to what the Yankees had, they loved his defensive, they loved being switch hitter, okay? okay? So now let's say that doesn't happen. I have a hole at third base. <clears throat> the Yankees got Prada, who they like. Yes. But they want to, I think, go with Perella, a rookie, or that Reisendorf, I think that's how you say his name, a kid that's just tearing the cover off the ball, another second base. I think they'd like to keep that position open for one of the two of them. If that's the case, Prada, I think, if they can't sign anybody, becomes a third baseman. Does that? How does that weaken the Yankees, though? Because now I don't even haven't even talked about a shortstop <laughs> yet. Yeah. Okay, so is Prada more a guy that the Yankees can play everywhere, and they go um, um, Brock Holt on him? Yep. Okay. Or they just play him at third base and go with it. Or if one of these two kids don't make it. They go with him at second base. You see my dilemma now? Oh, yeah. Well, well, well who are you, is, who's playing? This is Abin Costello. Who's playing first? Who's playing short? Who's playing second? Because where's Prada going to play? Is he going to play third base? And then and then we have a problem over here. We're going to go do this. Mm -hmm. Or does he stay there? And then what are we going to do at second base? The Yankees have a major problem. Because the only upside so far I'm seeing is they seem to be set in the outfield. They've got Ellsbury, Gardner. And um, Beltran yep. to play. Now Beltran is going to have to stay healthy because A Rod's going to take up all of the DHing time. Okay. Very true. Yep. They made they got young at the end of last year and he played really well for him. Amazing. And then they resigned you know, him. And they resigned him for one year. So I think there's all upside here for the Yankees. Like I've one, always, and a, one and a quarter. Or something, yeah, right? I really like this kid. He was a problem with the Mets, but he was no problem with the Yankees. Somehow. And so and so he and he plays a good defense and he play, runs the bases and on a one year contract in New York, what's he going to give the Yankees? Right. And, and he's still young. Right. Okay? Yeah. So I like that move. So mm -hmm. if somebody goes down, he can step in. What about, are they going to bring Ichiro back? No, Ichiro's gone. Okay. Okay, so, so, so I think like the Yankee outfield is set. Okay. I, I like the Yankee outfield. I like my bullpen. I think we have to sign David Robertson. If they don't sign David Robertson, then the, my the stud's going to take over. But that's a lot to ask for somebody that only had one real year in the major leagues. Dude, Daniel Bard. Man. Yeah, Daniel you know, Bard. so what I'm worried, yeah, but they're not trying to make him a starter. That's true. That, I think that's where that all happened. That's okay? true, yeah. So I think I see the Yankees. The Yankees spending money. I think where you think the Yankees spend uh, money, I think you might see him make a run at Andrew Miller. Okay. Yeah. And then have like this. This like uh, what I'd love to see is Robertson, Miller, and that kid in the bullpen. That's pretty. It, it, it'd be like this. Like it, it. It would be. That's pretty solid. Yeah. It'd yeah. be pretty solid. Yeah. And then they can. Then, and then they had success with some of their younger kids at the bottom end of the bullpen. So what do the Yankees do if if Robertson goes? Do the Yankees sign another? Bullpen guy, uh, uh, closer somewhere. I don't know. I Who's think, out there? I, th I think uh, um, um, Rodriguez. Do you know Rodriguez is only 31 years old? K Rod? K Rod's only 31 years old. Do you remember when he, he was only like 23 when he was pitching for the Angels? It that seems was, that. What, 11, 12 years it, ago? It, well, I don't know, but I'm just saying it seems like two decades ago, doesn't I know, it? Oh, it does. So, anyway. Well, he was a rookie that year. Yeah, well, see, out. that's my point. Yeah, but you know, but, kid, so yeah. do the Yankees go with him? But a lot of these guys are going to want more than one year, and I don't think the Yankees want to do that. Right. So I think I think the Yankees sign Robertson, or they go this way. They're going to have to give him big bucks, huh? I don't know. I I, I think I think three if, years, I think if they give him three and thirty six, I think it will get it done. Again, it's not the amount. Of, it's not the um, money for the Yankees. It's the years. Yeah. So I think the Yankees are set at catcher. I think they're set at first base. They got no choice. Okay, they're set at first base. I think, I I, I, I think, now that A. Rod has said what he said in front of the federal grand jury, now that he's actually come out and admit that, it's almost like a smoking gun with you seeing the video of Ray Rice hitting his girlfriend. Yeah. I think I don't know this, but they're reading different places. Maybe the Yankees 
have an avenue to do something. You here. can only hope so. Or, <laughs> or they put him on the field, make him play to where he physically proves he can't, and then it's like eight, insurance pays like 80% and he retires, and they pay him, okay? <laughs> Do I think he can get through a year? There's just there's got, there's got to be no way he gets through a year, or maybe he can. Yeah, but just getting through the year hitting two fifty three, hitting nine home runs. Well, I think if that's the case, I think you see the Yankees in midseason go shit. Yeah, I think you should, see the see, should see, yeah, they? should <laughs> yeah, I think you see the Yankees get in midseason think to themselves, he's going to physically be able to play, and the Yankees at that point going, let's just pay him and cut him loose. Wow. Because 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 it's not because then. I, see, I, I, I think you're misreading the whole thing. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna have a good season. I, I something weird tells me that he's gonna come back and he's gonna. Okay. Well, and then, he, the, here's another but, thing. But if that happens, then he's only the DH, and that's fine. But and here's another thing that you're totally uh, you're missing is that he's gonna bring fans to the stadium for whatever reason. He's a freak yeah, and yeah. a sideshow. I think you're. I, you're right. But but you're he's right. gonna he's gonna draw attention. You're right. And. Spring training is going to be all about a rod. That's right. So, th which might not be bad. Right, and it, it's going to bring them some kind of publicity. I mean, so, sometimes you know what do they say? <laughs> um, no publicity is bad publicity. Right, or, right, right. So the kid, the kid, um, the panda. Yeah. You know, um, Sandoval. May, maybe the Yankees see they can't. Uh, um, that, um, you know, the the panda. Do you, the do, pa you, do you think five years and a hundred million dollars isn't too much for him? I think I think I think 100 million dollars is a lot, but the Yankees have the money. You'd have to dig deeper into his stats too, you know, because we're only seeing him. His in the stats playoffs. are good. His he plays well in the playoffs. His stat, no, his 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 seasonal stats are good. I was looking the other day. All right. And he plays good third base. And he base. switch hits. And he's and he's a good defender. And, and he's supposed to be he's supposed to be like a good teammate. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so, that's one of his biggest. So attributes. so I think I think if the Yankees aren't here, here's what I want to say. Who would you rather have, Panda at at 100? For five years, or Headley at four years for, for for fifty. Yeah, you'd rather have um, Sandoval. Yeah, see, 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 that's my argument. My, right. You know, my argument is Headley's going to push it so far where the Yankees are going to wait a minute, four years, and we, we don't, you know, you you hit two seventy three, you didn't, you hit nine home runs, you didn't tear that, you, you weren't this guy. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't earn himself a four year yeah. contract. Yeah, so he's going to get it. You think one dumb owner? Wow. Because he's only thirty one. Yeah. Okay. He's going to get it, or at least three. Yeah. Okay. That's probably three more. in good money. Yep. So I'd rather have the Panda. Question is, San Francisco going to pay to bring their boy back? Will the Dodgers pay to get him back if they lose Ramirez? Will the Red Sox pay? Or the Red Sox pay? Or the Braves pay? Yeah. So he's going to get his money. So that's why I think the Yankees probably won't be. Is I think somebody's going to do six or seven years. Wow. But if he, the Yankees really want him, they'll, they'll get him. He's 28. Yeah, I know. If you that isn't this our always our how was how was Ramirez's contract at the end of his contract at 37? Manny. Yeah. Did you like it? Yes. Yeah. So, so the panda at thirty-five at the end of a contract? Nah. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, I, hope. I know what you're saying, but that's a chance. We, that's a chance yeah. we take. Yeah. Exactly. Now, there's a couple there's of flip no sides. The, the Yankees could go out. The, and now we're getting to shortstop. I really like Drew for a year. I'll tell you why. Wow. Because I love his defense. Well, and so yeah. there's something you can count on, and he can't be as bad. Be, I really think sitting out just screwed him. It did. I really think it so. It really did. So if he can hit two fifty. And play a super was, position. I don't think he was 100% healthy either. Well, I'm just saying, for one year. That's what I mean. You yeah. know? Or the Yankees like this Ramirez kid from Chicago who's going to be a free agent at the end of this coming year. Yeah. The Yankees could make a trade for him. But what I think I see the Yankees doing is they're going to spend money where they can spend money. Yeah. Because they really don't have much to trade. Yeah. I didn't look up and see what kind of free agents are on the market as far as shortstop goes. None. I mean, Cabrera maybe? A yeah, Cabrera? No, yeah. He's a second baseman now. Okay. That leaves Jed Lowry. Yeah. And, uh, and, you and, don't and, want Jed yeah, Lowry. Yeah. And, and there's, uh, you know, if Jed Lowry, I knew he was going to be healthy for three years. Oh, yeah. You take a I jump on it. Yeah. I know. But, uh, but no. In, in, Will Stephen Drew sign for one year again? Because he's a Boris guy, and you I, know he's. I think big bucks. I think the Yankees aren't afraid to give him. Who out there would give him two years and twelve? Think anybody? Twelve a year? No, twelve, 12 total. Yeah. I think somebody would. Yeah. Okay. Dep I I don't think so because I think I think he's they're scared of him right now, and especially Boris. But I think if the Yankees knock on the door and go, one year and eight, one year and nine. For one year, he gets to. For one year, he's going to make okay money. Yep. Good money. Yeah. And and he's in. If you're going to play somewhere to try to resurrect your career, it's in a major media market. Oh yeah. L. A. 
Boston. Boston or the yep. Yankees, or preferably Boston or the Yankees. Right. Okay, because who gets more press than the Northeast, okay? Right. So I would see if he could get two years somewhere, but one year from the Yankees, I see him going to the Yankees. Yeah. Has a good year. Has a good year. And then he can get his Let, contract. Let's say it's 285. Yeah. Hits, oh, yeah. Hits 14 home runs, plays a super defense, and now he's only 32. Yeah, then he's, and he go, then he's a free agent. Yep. Okay, then he's resurrected. Yeah, yeah. So I would like to have Stephen Drew because I don't think the Yankees have enough to trade to go get anybody. But what if what if you get the Stephen Drew you had last year? Again, then I get good defense for a year. You're gonna hide that bat in that lineup? Yeah, I'll hit him ninth. All right. I mean, I'll hit him you're ninth. gonna have to. Yeah, I'll hit him ninth. <laughs> it's, I'll it hit was, him ninth. It was that bad. It was that bad for both teams, uh, for the Red Sox and the Yankees. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I, I but agree. But you might be right. I mean, you never had a spring training. I mean, I'm, see, I'm, so I'm talking about I'll get superior defense. Guaranteed. Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah. No. It's 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 worth thinking about. You know, it's it's an avenue that they so, they're probably ex so exploring for sure. Yeah. So my so my argument kind of comes. Your argument after listening to you for a bit, your argument came down to third base. Well, not your argument, but your what you were going for. Third base starting pitching. Yes. Okay. So I'm talking about shortstop. I got to get if it's not Drew, it's somebody like Drew. So let me just say that. So mm -hmm. I'm confident court shortstop will be. Defensively played next year. Can we go? Let's go with that. Unless the Yankees pull something off. Yeah. I don't like the kid from um, Colorado. He's injury prone now. Too he's he's too much trouble. And there he's going to cost a fortune. Yeah. Um, like s five more years at twenty a year. Or something Not even. Like that. You're going to have to give up. Pros oh I mean, yeah. All kinds yeah. Of and prospects. Trade? Yeah. Right. Um, so I haven't even talked about what may, might be the major problem though. Is my starting pitch. Yeah. Well, okay. That's, that's... So here's why I'm coming back next so year. So it's the same for both of us, really. I like, my, I like my position better than yours, and let me get through it. And I, and, uh, Go ahead. You, know, you, you obviously say what you think, so let me, let, me, let me get through it. Well, you said I haven't given you enough crap yet. So <laughs> maybe I want to start right Sabathia, now. Sabathia. Terrible. Pineda. Sucks. Phelps. Awful. Mitchell. Terrible. Nova. Terrible. Free agent McCarthy. Awful. Tanaka. Kuroda. Ah, who? who? <laughs> okay, so. Okay, no, so, seriously. Okay. Um, Nova's not going to be back till what, probably the middle of the season? They're thinking hopefully June. Okay. Okay. That could so, be big. That could be big. It'd be like making a trade. We always say that, okay? Absolutely. So I'm not counting him in my starting five. No, you shouldn't. Okay? Kuroda's probably going to retire, but maybe not for this reason. Sabathia comes back. I have no idea. Nothing. I have none. I, know, I, mean, I have no idea. Crap I do know this. He doesn't throw 97 miles an hour anymore. No, he... I know that he throws 92, 93 now. Yep. All right? And if he hasn't learned to pitch to that like Kurt Schilling did at the end, then Sabathia is a number five guy, and if he gets shelled, well, now I'm three years at $25 million a year. Pineda, Pineda, look, let's face it. He, 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 was a, he was a stud at the end of last year, but I'm not gonna, I can't argue your argument of, do I know he's going to stay healthy? Exactly. Okay? It's the biggest and thing. And so now I've got to say the same thing about um, Tanaka. Yeah, Tanaka's your I, I had the I, I had um, one of the would you would you agree one of the best five pitchers in baseball last year? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. I know you yeah. hate to say it, but yeah. but one yeah. of the best five pitchers. Now I don't know how, that... how how he'll even be in spring training, or if he'll be even diminished a little bit, or what, what, when? He's gonna you, blow out his arm. You know, what, what's gonna happen? You know what's gonna happen? I'll be out to eat with the wife, and you'll you'll text me. Oh. Um, Tommy John Tommy surgery. John. You you've heard it before I did. Yeah, because you remember, remember when you got mad at me last time yeah, last year. Yeah, <laughs> when you said you yeah that that was don't even get me going. Well, you know. Here's the thing, <laughs> but but that is the old you though. It is. <laughs> Here's the thing though is I almost wish they just would have given him the operation, so it'd just be gone this year and back that, next year. I said that exactly because if he blows out his arm this year, he's lost for two years. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now McCarthy's a free agent. And because because of the argument we made about when these guys go, he's the next level, and now all of a sudden he's a stud free agent, right? So I don't know if the Yankees can get him. Now that brings me to Kuroda. Do I actually let him go now, or right. give him one more year again at 15 million? If he takes it. Yeah, but he doesn't necessarily want to pitch anymore. I mean. Yeah, but I, I, but I'll tell you what, man. How many guys? How many guy, guys are as game as him? You know? And it's hard to turn out $15 million yeah. for anything. So that leaves me with this kid Mitchell they like, with Phelps, um, with Green, who pitched well last year. But now, but and now this is where I see myself in a better position than the Red Sox. You've got to admit, those young kids for me are better than the young kids for the Red Sox because those at, young kids just haven't proven themselves yet. At this point, definitely. At this point, yep. Phelps is a good number five. Yep. Oh, okay? Yeah. Okay? 
I think Green's a three or four maybe, but now this is his second year. We'll see what he's got. Right. That old one year, one time through the week, now one year through the week. Sophomore slump. Let's see what thing. he's got, yeah. okay? Nova coming back, Pineda, all those guys are young. Yep. But what am I going to do with Sabathia? What am I going to do with Tanaka? What am I, you, you, you know, you, so. A lot of question marks, dude. A lot of, lot of question marks, but I think, I think this is a situation where you know what I think the Yankees are going to do? Get Scherzer? No. Well, <laughs> I, haven't got, I haven't gone there yet. I think um, just go for um, bringing eight or nine guys. Wow. And just, uh, and, and just have that many guys. Because somebody's not going to hold on. What's the old or, adage? Or go with a six-man rotation. You can never have enough pitching. Exactly. Or go with a six-man rotation. Yeah, I, I think teams are usually very So what do I think? We're getting short on time here. What do I think? I think the Yankees are going to go with all these guys, hold on for Nova, try to bring back McCarthy. If they can't sign him, I think you see them try to sign another mid-level guy or roll the dice on uh, maybe in Tanakh and um, Kuroda comes back on um, 10 mil. Set of 15 or something like that. Here's here's a here's an overall synopsis of what Sherrington and what Cashman are probably going to be doing this year. And it's going to be like us playing fantasy football. Like you think you have your team set at the beginning of the season or whatever, and you end up shuffling the hell out of it all year long because there's just there's going to be a lot of moving parts on both teams. Yes. And I, I think the team on for both of us, the teams you see on opening day are going to be. Nowhere indicative of the teams we're going to see in September. Possibly, and the uh, and the other thing is, I think we both have the the American League East is going to be wide open again. Again, yeah. Because because Toronto, I mean, because uh, with um because with Andrew Miller leaving, with um um. Um, um, Don't count Baltimore out. No, the left. No, no, I'm saying they're out. But who's the left fielder escaping? Is escaping me? They hit all the home runs. Oh, right Nelson now. Cruz. They're yeah, gonna Nelson Cruz is we. Yeah, but but they, but but do they want to pay that much money? It's going to hurt them in other places. True. So we'll see. So I, what I want to say before a couple. In Tampa minutes, Bay. In Tampa Bay. And what I want to say before we close this out is that I can see the Yankees or Red Sox, Yankees and Red Sox, or the Yankees or the Red Sox either make a big jump or go nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's going to be one of the more fascinating off seasons. But, in, what, but, sure. but what would be more fun is if we could just all play to like 85 wins and every, all the teams and it'd be fun to the end. That right. would, I, I could deal with that. And then beat each other up in the play, or, you know, see who, who wins in the playoffs, right? Let's just both get in the playoffs. Well, even, if we, even if we don't make the playoffs, but in the last week of the season, we're playing to get into the playoffs. I can live with that. Anything, anything but last year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was just uh, unbearable. And it was, it was bad as fans and it was even worse sitting here talking about it every two weeks right because you know what it, eventually it's just like okay they they sucked really bad two weeks ago now they suck even worse what else are we going to say yep. so let's hope uh we have better seasons next year i don't see how they can get possibly any worse um uh, that's pretty much the end of our our um finale our wrap-up show it was a pretty good job i mean we we didn't have to get into any of our ancillary stuff yep, i mean yep. real quick joe madden went to the cubs yep. i mean that's a that's a, I think big, it's a good move that's a big thing um there wasn't a lot of other uh big off-season stuff um john lackey's taking the league minimum i think that's pretty yeah yeah pretty well, well, let's wait till we get closer to uh him reporting see what happens yeah i know because yeah that's just ridiculous but you know he, he's five hundred thousand dollars there's know? just there's no way i know there's but, no way but i mean if you, if you gave me five hundred thousand dollars I'd pretty oh much yeah, do, do anything. Well, the professional I always say we'd play for the buffet, for the buffet. after the game. Exactly. <laughs> yep. I've, I've I've eaten a lot of buffets, and I'm sure there's as oh, trumps man. anything we've oh. ever had. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so that's it. Um, we'll see you. Uh, you know, when it's warmer out. Yeah, hopefully, like, hopefully the la we're thinking last Thursday in March. I think yeah. it sounds like pretty yep, good. Yep. Right around opening day, we'll have we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about. I can only imagine this thing's probably chock full. Yep. And, all we can hope is that we're not talking about the Patriots as the Super Bowl champs. Please, I, God, I know. I know please. you don't want that. I, I'm, I'm a big Green Bay fan now all of a sudden. Or, you know, anybody, D Denver, anybody, just please, fill along. Anybody. God. Anybody but the, the Patriots. Um, so I think uh, Frank took care of the, everything for us today, so we got to give him a huge yep, shout-out. He did a, a great job. Everything, um, as usual. Yep, yeah, big Frank always does a great job, but little Frank, he's really the, he, uh, he's the engine. He's the nuts and bolts, man. He is. He's the he's the. the the little, the little engine the that little could engine here. That it could. keeps the show running. So he did a great job and uh, helped us out on a couple of things. So um, we're Socks and Stripes Forever. You have anything good for dinner tonight? We have, uh, Steak about? strip. Nice. I had that for lunch today. I'm having uh, lunch. I know. What are you having for dinner? Uh, cod. Oh, you the man. I know. Well, you know, triple time tomorrow. So, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so happy Veterans Day uh, Absolutely. to all the veterans out there. And, um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll happy New Year. We'll see. We'll probably hopefully look a little bit different, you know, this thing. Maybe who's, who knows. But uh, And 
That's it. That's all I got. We'll see you next year. All right, we're out of here. <laughs>